Just about two months ago, the filmmaker was given a sentence of six years in prison and also a 20-year ban on filmmaking, writing, granting interviews, and also traveling overseas. For the director who is turning 51 this year, this sentence effectively terminates his artistic life, and the sentence is under appeal at the moment. In Panahi's trial defense, he writes, quote from him, my case is a perfect example of being punished before committing a crime. You are putting me on trial for making a film that at the time of our arrest was only 30% shot. He furthers, if these charges are true, you are putting not only us on trial, but the socially conscious, humanistic, and artistic Iranian cinema as well. A cinema which tries to stay beyond good and evil. A cinema that does not judge nor surrender to power or money, but try to honestly reflect images of the society. I am a socially committed filmmaker, not a political one. My main concerns are social issues, therefore my films are social dramas, not political statements. For a film that they have not yet made, uh, made they have been sentenced to six years in prison and 20 years banned from filmmaking. However, as Rumi says in a poem, a brother, to hame andishei ma baqi khod ustukhan rishei, a brother, all you are is your intellect. The rest of you is just bone and tissues. So tonight we are, in fact, in the presence of everything that Muhammad Rasulov is about, his art. Muhammad Rasulov was born in 1973. He's a very, very young filmmaker, but he has already made a name for himself with a number of films, most particularly a film that he made in, in 2005 called uh, Iron Island that was globally celebrated. And this film, White Meadows, is uh, the second film, the major uh, adventure into uh, narrative cinema that he has made and you're about to, uh, to watch. This film comes uh, uh, in its narrative uh, proclivity in a tradition in Iranian cinema that is very allegorical. Those of you who know Iranian cinema, perhaps with a film like Arbi Avanesian's Spring or Bahram Bezai's uh, Stranger and the Fog or Mohsen Mahmalbov's uh, Gabbe, this is in that uh, genre of cinema. Very allegorical, very ritualistic, and very uh, much in the tradition of cinematic manipulations of local traditions and uh, mythology. Uh, it is extremely important that the film not to be reduced backward into any art, uh, art anthropological speculation about uh, Iran or about the region in which this film was made. This is a work of art, and as all artists, uh, uh, Mohammad Rasulov has worked with certain material. Uh, so from this film, you will not deduce anything anthropological, political, or anything of that sort about him or about the country of his origin. In I am the artist. Uh, the production design for me is that like canvas. I am going to paint the film. You know, sometimes I go, uh, I'm working with Shirin Nishad for a long time, 15, 15 years, uh, and all the Shirin's film I did as production design, and I work with the hand, and this is not just to travel, like, like the chairs to that room, that room, this is a static that we bring that in the film. And every scene as the film for me is that every shot is the one picture and canvas and I'm going to paint the film. That's my job as production design and that's very important. And as when I was in Tehran for the, my show exhibition in the, when the gallery, Rasulov knows about that, I'm in Iran and he called me then and asked and it was for me really fantastic to do something to make it to be together with the Rasulov. He is very talent and young, and he has the really metaphoric and uh, symbolic idea. And that is the, uh, actually a style for the artist. The uh, 
uh, narrative uh, allusions uh, to uh, begins with, for example, a funeral, some suggestion of necrophilia, to wedding, a suggestion of sati, uh, etc. Even uh, uh, a baptism scene, uh, etc. These are all allusions. Some of them come from Iranian society. Some of them from Islamic context. Some of them from uh, Indian context. So this is uh, a way of generating within the cinema a narrative. A man who goes from island to island. The uh, cinematic landscape is, in fact, is I'm sure Shahram has had something to do with it. Very much influenced and, and uh, from by Shirin Nishat's uh, uh, cinematic vocabulary. Uh, but ultimately, it boils down to an allegorical narrative from, uh, about a man who goes from island to island and collects tears and uh, then uses that uh, accumulated, painfully accumulated tears in order to cure or try to cure somebody else's pain and suffering. I want to say that, the, I don't know who said uh, the good film, that for example, for a good film is that the finish, the film has started to thinking. And that's really, uh, I, I love the cinema, I love the film, it's open. And uh, Audi Chiaro Sami one time say, I love the, the film is finished, the, the audience make it that is finished, not the director. And uh, that, what for me is as part in the film, really when I see one time, and sometimes I go and sometimes I see it for after a long time, and every time when I, the sadness, what we have, some people from the outside, the Iran, they don't get it, because we are inside that is sadness. We are in, we understand more because he lives in Iran. And that's symbolic for the country. You cannot say everything that openly. The question is that why would the authoritarian regime consider this to be a threat? Uh, I remember when I was uh, an undergraduate student in Tehran, we had a joke that this guy was, this is during the Shah's time, that this guy was just walking the street and saying, you son of a bitch, you bastard, you sold our country, you are a betrayer to our aspiration. And the police captured him and said, why are you insulting his majesty? And said, when did I say his majesty? So all, all these indications somehow refers to him. Uh, the same is when you have an authoritarian regime, it doesn't matter what you say. They begin to have some certain interpretations that they think is an allusion to dictatorship, etc. I mean, the scene that you have somebody saying you have to see the sea as blue, there's no other color, and this painter is, can't have any other color. Uh, Kwam Ruz is in the, uh, is in the audience. Uh, as, a, as a painter, as an artist, if you are uh, told this is the color that you have to see the thing, obviously is a, is a political illusion. 